Hi everyone, this is Patty Edmondson, Curator of Costume and Textiles at the Western Reserve Historical Society. Obviously, many of us are not at work right now. I'm coming to you from my house, and in the spirit of make, do, and mend, and do the best we can right now in our lives, then I thought I would show you how to darn a sock. It's a bit of a makeshift way. I don't have all the supplies I normally would have, and I'm not going out to the sewing store, so um, I'm starting with my sock, which doesn't have a hole, but it has some thin areas that I'll show you. And then I happen to have some embroidery thread on hand. Uh, better yet, if you have an old sweater at your house that you can unra unravel a little bit of that thread, that's great. Uh, and then I have an embroidery needle. Um, let's see. <laughs> it has a dull point. Uh, and then I don't have a traditional tool for darning, which would be something called a darning egg or a darning mushroom, which is usually a wooden shape that you put inside the sock. So I thought, what do I have around my house? And right now, uh, all of us need these. <laughs> so I have a stemless glass of uh, wine glass, rather, and I'm gonna see how that works. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. Okay, so you can see here is my thin area, which in this case just happens to be about the size of the foot of my wine glass. I've also taken a rubber band and put that around the sock to kind of hold everything in shape. Um, so it is no darning mushroom, but let's give it a try. I'm gonna start uh, one set of lines with my yellow thread and I'm gonna just make a little stitch in the corner. Essentially, I'm going to make a square, or I'm going to try to make a square, over my circle shape. So I'm going to leave a little tail a few inches long, and then I'm going to go across. So I have one line and I've anchored it and I'm gonna go back and forth across my hole. Uh, now I want these to be pretty close together, um, which makes weaving a little bit hard, but then it eliminates that hole. So my sock, you can see that there, let's see, are, you can see the different um, yarns here. I'm trying to go over one thread at a time. So right now they look like they're on top of one another, but there's a little space in between. So then I'm just going to keep going across. and forth. And I'll just keep going like that all the way down here. Okay, so here I've got my yellow lines in place. Um, it is all one string, although look, I have a yellow that goes light to dark and back and forth, sort of an ombre, so that's why it looks like that. Now I've chosen red as my uh, perpendicular thread, just so you can see it better. It also looks kind of fun. I've anchored it um, with a stitch at one end and left a uh, line, and then I'm going over and under, over and over, under, over and under, all the way across. And then I'm going to anchor it with a little stitch and then do the opposite. So the thread that I've gone over at the end here, I'm going to start by going underneath. Let's see. Sometimes I find it helpful to work up here and then I'll push my way, my thread back down after I get it across.
So here I have my finished square. Is it perfect? No. Did I think about coronavirus while I was making it? No. So now I'm gonna take my needle and go inside the sock and just kind of weave these loose ends through that. So here's what it looks like on the inside and I've got my four loose corners and I'm just gonna sort of weave this across the edge or across diagonally with the needle. And I'll do that with all four. All right, friends. Well, I never thought I would be showing my feet like this in a professional video, but here you can see my other thin hole that needs work. And here is my nice cozy little darned square. So hope you enjoyed this uh, little tutorial. I'm sure you can find much better versions of it on YouTube if you do some Googling. So um, good luck and enjoy.